so could you tell me a bit about like uh, which battalion you served in um, like, and when you served? Yeah, well, I went in, in June 1951 into the Royal Regiment. I did my basic training at Chichester, that's in Sussex, and then from there we went on to Canterbury for more training, and then I went out to Egypt to join the, their first battalion. I was stationed at Suez for about five and a half months, and then um, about 30 of us, my group, were transferred to the Fusiliers, we came back to England, and then joined the Royal Fusiliers, and did training here, there, in England rather, and then uh, from there we went out to Korea, and we were there for about nine months before I was demobbed. And then after that I went into, I say, the TA for two and a half years, because I was part of the national service at the time, and then that was my service. And so, where were you born and when? I was born in Chatham in Kent in 1933, February 33. And I said my father was in the army at the time, he was, he was stationed there, he was in the military police. And then from there we went to Kent, so we all shot in Hampshire and then Borden. And then he left the army at the last day of 1938 and we came to live in Bexley Heath. So I spent most of my years in Bexley Heath. So like what kind of area did you grow up in? Like, what kind of I grew up in, in really in Bexley Heath, which is South East London and went to school there and then when I left school in 1950, 1950 I went into Midland Bank, worked in London and I was there for about 15 months before my national service started Then, when I came out of national service went back to the bank and spent my working life in different branches and uh, retired in what's that, 21 years ago Whenever that was. <laughs> so, when you were called up, uh, what was your reaction? Well, I, I, everyone went into the National Service in those days and I wanted to go in. I, I was quite interested in going into the Army. My two older brothers had both done National Service. I said my father had been a regular soldier anyway, so I wanted to do my time. I didn't want to be a regular soldier. I had no ambition to do that, but I wanted to spend my National Service doing it. So, what did your family think of you joining? Well, my, f my father's quite pleased, I think, because um, my mother, I'm told she worried about it. I didn't know that. But they say she worried. Women, women do. But my, my father's quite proud because he'd been outside in the First War. And uh, we were, before we went to Korea, we had a big parade in London. The whole battalion marched through London because it, it's a city of London regiment. I'm, my father came out and watched it, I know that. So, do you think that national service was a good idea? Do you think it should have carried oh, on now? Oh, I think so. I, I think it helped your character. I was probably a bit shy before, but I'm still shy afterwards, I don't know, but uh, I got more confidence somehow, even though you were, someone's telling you what to do all the time. You get away from your home, I think, and it helped me that way. I, did, I never regretted doing it. Uh, I'd, I'd been upset if I hadn't. So, where did you f uh, first train? Well, the basic training yeah, was at Chichester. I was lucky then, I went in in June, so the weather was really nice. Where some people were going in January or something, and it's freezing cold, so we were lucky. But that was for six, month, six weeks basic training. And then went to Canterbury for four weeks further training before we were being posted out to join the Royal Sussex Regiment in Egypt. So I had about two or three weeks just sort of sitting around and waiting for the uh, draft to go. So what, what was the accommodation like where you were training? Training, well, Chichester was nice. They were, they were modern barracks. They were built just before the war, I think. They were quite smart. Canterbury wasn't so good. It was, it was huts, really. And uh, it was all right because it was in the summertime. But I think it had been winter. It had been quite cold, uncomfortable. And so, what was the food like there? Food was quite good, actually. I, I, I thought it was good anyway. It was always edible. In, in England, that was, yeah. And uh, so, what, what was the training like? 
although, and we were lucky, our, our first six feet weren't too bad, although it seemed hard at the time because none of us were used to being chased around and they, they really put us through it so we get used to being, doing as we're told. Um, for instance, you'd get um, told to get changed into PT kit, PT kit ready, get outside and say, right, get back in, change into battle dress. So, and then the next thing they change back to PT kit, they just get us doing silly things. But we just accepted it, I think. We were on the same boat. So what would be an average day of training? Well, we did a certain amount on the parade ground, marching up and down and getting used to the drill. But then we'd also go out into the, onto the downs and um, to training there sort of thing. And also we went to the fine ranges. We used to go down to Hyde in Kent and you know, had fun on the firing range. And that could be difficult times. So we did one what's called the Donkey Derby. It was, I think it's at Hyde, it's very pebbly there. You start off at 600 yards and then you fire, maybe standing up. Then you have to run down to the 500 yards and do something else, lay down or kneel down or something, fire again. Because the time you got down to the 100 yards, you were puffing, blowing, and I couldn't hit the target at all. It was just hopeless. But it was part of the training. We just, I think, you accepted it because nothing in the army you have to do is you're told. I was, you wouldn't be able to run the army. No, no, that was all right. But how, uh, how do you think other people, like you said, that you just accepted that? They, 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 they all did. I think we all did. We got, a, we got on well together because you're all in the same boat, so you help each other out, sort of thing. You know. And I can remember once having to go on guard duty, and I hadn't had time to, we said, to blank our belts and that sort of thing. I hadn't had time to do it. Somebody lent me his, which had been done. So you didn't get in trouble. So you, you do help each other out. Mm. And so what was the most memorable thing about training? can't remember anything in particular, I don't think. I felt very fit at the end of it, after the six weeks training, basic training. First week we did a lot of PT, which I hadn't done before, and I really physical stuff. In fact, I discovered I, I could do the hard jump. I'd never tried it before, because we were told how to jump, and because you have instructions. It was quite good that way, and I did learn it. But, you know, I did really feel very fit after the six weeks. So we got, we got home leave then. And we didn't get any, the first three weeks we didn't go out of the camp, we weren't allowed out, we weren't considered smart enough. But then we did, and we had, in fact, when I was in Chichester, we had a parade there. It was the, the Duke of Norfolk took it, took the salute, because it was the Royal Sussex Regiment, and he was at Arundel, that's where their castle is. That was quite a big, big thing. We had a big dinner after it and that sort of thing. It was, it was quite impressive to me. And so what was army life like after training? Army life? Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, it, it, it eased up. After the, the six weeks training at Canterbury, it was much easier then. You get out to a unit. You said training, but um, they didn't get you running around quite so much. Mm. And perhaps I was a bit lucky. Cause I was, when I went out to the Royal Sussex, I, they picked me out to work in the orderly room. And uh, of course, it's a bit better life there, I think, in a way. You kept busy, but it was, you're working like in an office rather than you know, running around the field with rifles. Uh, did the attitude of the officers and the NCOs change towards you after you'd finished training? To a certain extent, yes. I think in basic training they really had us running around, but after that, you still got chased around a bit, you know, to behave yourself and to do what you're told. There's no question of that. But they treat us more like trained soldiers rather than trainees before that.